These industrial sewing machines look really cool, right? And I bet you always think that they're perfect for your heavy duty fabrics and all of that. Well, unfortunately that's not always the case. Uh, this video was highly, highly requested by you guys about industrial sewing machines. So let's today cover some what are industrial sewing machines, what are they used for, why you might like one, and of course I'll show you through my brand new Juki over here as well. Welcome back to my channel, my lovely ladies and gents. Thank you for tuning in. And if we have just met, this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood, and here on this channel, we talk about everything sewing, vintage, and fashion. Now, last week, I posted a video where I introduced you to all of my sewing machines, and I was actually blown away by the amount of comments uh, I had from you guys wanting to see more about just what industrial machines are, that you're interested in them, like what would you use it for, uh, like, and to see mine more in detail, even though some of you just, just want to see them, and some of you thought, maybe this is for me, and can I find out more information to see if this is indeed what I need. My first uh, experience with uh, industrial sewing machines was way back in fashion college, and you know, we'd have classrooms full of uh, industrial sewing machines. So some would sit down, some would even stand up. And I was just blown away by these machines. They are so fast, they're so smooth. Oh, they're a dream. They are totally fascinating machines and you're probably wondering, is it right for you in what you're sewing? Do you need one? Let's start off with just what is an industrial sewing machine. So an industrial sewing machine is just that. It's meant for industry. So this is what you see in all of the garment factories anywhere in the world are industrial sewing machines. And they are in fact mounted on these tables that you see here. So the whole unit is what you get. The main reason that you'll go for an industrial machine over domestics is for the speed, the durability, and the functionality, reliability. But basically, one machine does just one job. So this one here is my straight sewer, and it just does a plain straight stitch. That is the only thing it does. This one over here is my overlocker, and it does just that, overlocking. So one machine does one job only but it does that job really, really well. So in industry, you will have a factory floor full of so many different machines because they only do one job each. So one does a buttonhole, one uh, does hemming, one does blind hem, one does a cover stitch, one does a zigzag, then you've got all your straight sewers, then you've got, you get the idea. Everything has one job that it that it does. So having an in, one industrial sewing machine will not replace your domestic machine. What are the different types of industrial sewing machines? We kind of covered it already. So you have many different uh, types. Basically, one machine does one job. So you have a straight sewer, a zigzagger, an overlocker, three or five thread. You have a cover stitch machine, blind hemming machine, buttonholer, did I say that already? Uh, so all of those you know, are separate different machines. And it depends on what you're sewing and what your needs are to the garments that you're making is how many different machines that you would need. I'm going to focus just on these two machines that I think that you'll be mostly interested in as well, my overlocker and the plain straight sewer. So this is a plain lock stitch machine, which is the, the straight sewer. And as I said, within the plain straight sewer, you can get regular uh, dress fabric weight. That's what mine is. And then there are heavy duty machines that are meant for canvas, upholstery, things like that. So within the straight sewer, there are different categories of what they sew as well. So all you would need to do is, if you're looking at secondhand machines, is to basically Google the serial number of the machine and find out that information. When you're looking at your uh, industrial sewing machines, your straight sewers, there are two main motors that operate these. You've got a clutch motor and a servo motor. Let me explain what they are. Now, I'll come back and show you more details of my machine uh, at the end, but right now, when I turn this on, can you hear nothing? You can't hear anything, right? So this is a servo motor. Again, I'll show you these features in a little bit pretty quiet, right? So the idea with a servo motor is, is that it only draws power when the machine is like in operation, like when you put your foot down. At least that's what I've been told and that's my understanding of it. 
as opposed to the clutch motor, which is probably, uh, I would say, a lower sort of ranking and possibly more likely to be on older machines. That's only the case with mine. So this, my overlocker is a clutch motor. Let me turn it on. You can hear that, right? You can hear the motor winding up and it's using, basically it's drawing power the entire time. So you can hear the difference. Uh, and that is the difference between the servo motor and the clutch motor. And it takes a while for it to wind down again as well. When we're talking about the different types of plane sewers, there's also, uh, along with the, the way the motor works, there's two different like functions, as in the design and how you would operate uh, the actual machine. And it's going to make a far bigger difference to your actual sewing. So there's a manual and then there's an automatic. So the manual machines work much like your home sewer machine. You start sewing, you have to put down the pedal to reverse. Again, I'll show you these features in a minute. Uh, and then keep going and at the end, you need to pull out your fabric and snip it off. You're used to that, right? Well, let me show you what an automatic industrial machine does. This is what blew me away in college. So automatic means when you can set uh, all of these little buttons up here, you can set it to automatically back tack uh, the amount of stitches that you want. So it will automatically, I just put my foot down. I didn't like do anything else. It knows to do that reversing the set amount and then just keep on stitching at the end. And when I'm ready to finish, I, and the threads cut and it's already back tacked that stitch as well. I know, this is what blew my mind when I was in college. So let me show you again, right? Automatic. I just did that in one go, yeah. So it does all of that sort of automatically. So you can see how this gets really fast and will improve your workflow when you can sort of have all these automatic features, which I personally just love. It's one of the reasons that I got this one. To get the machine to do that automatic function, uh, you simply put your foot down, and then what I do is heel backwards and it cuts and does that automatic back tack at the same time. So forwards re so regularly and then on the, the foot pedal press backwards and it does that end feature. Really neat, huh? Are industrial sewing machines all for only heavy duty use? Hmm. This is one of the biggest misconceptions, I think. I often get, you know, asked to maybe do jobs on heavy thick canvas or leather, or I could borrow your industrial sewing machine because it'll get through that like piece of leather. No problems, right? No, not the case. So within the plane sewers, as I said, some are meant for heavy duty, like canvas, leather, upholstery. Others have actual leather machinery, like a separate machines. They're built separately. Mine is meant for dress fabrics. I need to be able to sew lovely light organza. No problem. Organza, like one layer sheer organza. No problem. Lovely silk taffeta. Yeah, I probably could change the needle for that one. It's a little bit crinkly. But see, no problem. As an experiment, let's layer this up, right? This is six six layers of this uh, linen cotton. Could you hear that like light thump, 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 thump as the needle's going through? If I was going to sew this, I would change the needle to a heavier one, but it's kind of at the limit of this machine. It's just not meant for super dupy, like any thicker than this is just not for this machine so much. Since we're here, let me show you through some of the features of my Juki. So this is the Juki 9000B, and I got it delivered just last week. Now, I definitely wanted a sewing machine with those automatic features because it's just what I'm used to. My old machine, which I bought secondhand, uh, had automatic features because the ones at Fashion College had automatic features, and I just loved it. It's so smooth, lovely, so great. So for me, that's a definite. Now, industrials, as I said, come mounted on these tables, so it, it's all this, and it weighs, like, not even joking, a ton. They're so heavy, so you need to have space and everything. There's a little drawer down here to put all your accessories. It's a bit stiff still. So, all sewing machines really work the same. Industrials have a bigger foot pedal down the bottom here, and one of the big things is they have a knee press. So this here is meant to 
you use your knee to to lift it and as you do it lifts the foot so because you don't want to be like doing these ones all around there mm -mm. we don't do that anymore we use your knee press and then you can like sew. it makes give you two hands for sewing so much better I can uh, adjust the speed on this one so you've got a little tortoise for slow and a little rabbit for fast so just like a lot of home sewers do these days if I turn it right down to the turtle it's got, like I'm flooring it and that's as fast as it's going to go. I can also choose whether I want the back tacking to actually work and I can choose to either um, select the scissors or no scissors. So you have those functions to be able to use um, for whatever you need. So you can make all of those adjustments depending on what you're sewing. And I don't know how many it does a minute, like stitches per minute, but it's a lot, it's pretty fast. <laughs> now, the other thing is really smooth. These industrials have a nice big flat bed, so it's really easier to work on. You've got this like flat surface that takes all the weight of your garment, so you're not like pulling and pushing, it's not destructing your sewing in any way. So you've got a nice big surface, which is beautiful. This particular machine is a direct drive machine, so it doesn't use a belt to actually run the motor or anything. So my little bobbin winder is on top. And one of the functions of an industrial machine is that you usually will be winding a bobbin as you're sewing. So you don't want to stop and do separate jobs. You want to keep going. So it does both at the same time. So I'll set up my next bobbin up the top here for it to wind. And as I'm sewing my garment, it will wind the next bobbin for me. So it's ready when this one runs out. Just like a regular sewing machine, I have a like manual reverse should I need to use it. And there's one here as well. Now there are some other functions on this machine, like you can set it to automatically um, go to a certain stitch length. So if you've got, this is more for like industry, where you've got like factory workers doing the same thing, the same thing, you know, you're doing a thousand pairs of the same jeans or whatever, and you've got a same stitch length, for example, on a pocket or something like that, you can program this to do those exact stitches so you don't even have to sort of stop and calculate or anything like that. I'm never going to really use those functions because it's just not what I do in my sewing. So I'm not going to bother showing you those fancy things because if I'm not using it, I don't think that you will either. So I have a dial to the, sti the stitch length. This one you have to sort of press down, you go down to two, or this one goes up to a number five as well, which is great. So you've got that extra length for um, like bastings and gatherings and all that sort of thing. Just like your home sewer, these come with many different feet attachment and that's really how you get the different functionality out of them. So they're all screw on, so they don't just pop on and off. You need a screwdriver and they're all in there. Uh, so you have separate uh, zipper foots for left and right zipper feet, you know, in visible zip feet, you have pleating feet, you have all different types of feet that you put on to get different uh, functions from the machine. Now these industrial machines use different needles than your home sewing machine, so it's important that you get different needles if you do have one. And they actually thread frontwards like you do at home. These ones actually go left to right, so they're built differently. Slide this little case out here and it lets you see down inside to your bobbin. And it's just the same bobbin that, you know, your regular, well, metal bobbins and uh, bevel bobbin cases specific to the machine but they are uh, work the same same way bobbin needles threads exact, exactly the same what else can i tell you so you can adjust the uh, foot pressure uh, foot the foot pressure of course as well is this dial up here and of course the tension as well like normal those are things that you don't really need to adjust when you're um, once they're adjusted they're they're sort of set oh and very importantly come over here. Now I remember uh, my last video I explained to you that uh, these older industrial machines they actually have an oil bath so it's really heavy. Let me see. So these actually, whoa, yeah see how it, the whole machine, I'm not going to pull it up the whole way, the whole machine flips forward and the older models all have baths of oil that they sit in because these run so fast they need a lot of high grade machine oil to keep them operating all the time and they actually sit in an oil bath so you can get you know oil um, in places it is something that happens with my industrial from time to time I might find um, little bits of oil here and there it's just part and parcel you know it's just it is what it is this new one though um, they actually have now encased all the oil into a little container 
and so there's no mess, no spills, it's really great. Then this little gauge here is where the oil uh, goes in. So it'll just tell you when it's high and low and you don't really ever have to top it up much. Basically get it serviced every once a year or so and your sewing machine mechanic can take care of that for you. Now the question is what would you potentially need an industrial sewing machine for? Well, as I said, you mostly get an industrial sewing machine for the speed, the reliability, and if you're sewing a lot, you want a machine that can keep up with that actual workload. So generally these are meant for industry. So if you run a business, I'd say that's definitely something to consider. I use it for, as I said, the speed, the like, ability of it. Uh, it sews so fast, it just goes over different fabrics, bumps, lumps, like it just keeps going. It's so smooth to use. It's like, I say it's like, a hot, it's like the sewing equivalent of hot butter, no, a hot knife through butter. Or if you just uh, sew, you know, sewing is your hobby, but you sew a lot, perhaps uh, if you have the space for um, a machine like this, it might be something you want to consider. But it will not replace your domestic machine. Let's get that very, very clear. This just does straight sewing. I still, in my business, use my domestic machine for any zigzag stitching I need to do, for any buttonholes, any decorative stitching. There, that's what I have to use that for. I use my industrial for all the straight stitching, of course, basting, pleats, gathers, anything like that. I still use it to put in zips. I use it for all my fine fabrics, for my thicker fabrics. It does all of those, but it can only sew a straight line. The only downfall is the cost. Obviously, they are quite expensive. I recommend having a look at secondhand ones because they are they just go. My old one was 20 years old. This one, my overlocker is 30 years old. They're designed to last a really long time. Like they're great pieces of machinery. If it's well maintained, that's the key, maintenance. It'll be it'll run for so many years. And the other like negative is the space. You need a lot of space to keep these machines. Uh, so you have to consider all your options there. If you do uh, have those things, I can almost guarantee that uh, you won't regret getting it because they are really amazing. If you're really into sewing and love it, uh, just don't be afraid of the speed. Older models don't have that speed dial on them, which I know just get used to controlling the pedal. You have a nice one that has nice smooth control action. It won't be too scary. You just get, just test it before you buy it like anything. Just test it, see whether you're comfortable using it and go from there. So I would love to know, are you considering an industrial machine yourself or do you already actually have one? Uh, write, like, leave those comments below with what you have, what you're thinking about using it for or what you do use it for. And remember to read through those comments because it might help you decide uh, seeing somebody else's um, like situation and what they do. It might help you decide if uh, getting an industrial sewing machine is right for you as well. Because I love reading through all your comments so much as well. If you know someone who's interested in an industrial machine, please share this video with them. I would be so grateful if you did that. Thank you. There is a link below to that video where I introduce you to all of my sewing machines if you wanted to see that. And then until next time, bye. To use, it's like I say, it's like a hot, it's like the sewing equivalent of hot butter. No, a hot knife through butter.